We have all experienced the hassle. A train rolls in, blocking the road you're trying to get down. For most of us, that means a quick detour to the next road that is not blocked. But here in Cokesville, Wyoming, it is not a quick detour. If I can't cross here because this is blocked, how do I get to the other side of the road? You would have to go 44 miles all the way around. Police Chief Mark Vierig says the train will sometimes sit for hours upon hours, refusing to budge, sometimes even just a few feet. But the train was literally just two cars past the main street. Here. So just far enough that nobody could get through. That no one could get through. Over oh. eight hours. And you know, Chief Varig says it's more than just a hassle when the train comes through town. You see, about half of the town's population lives over here on this side of the track. So when the train blocks the main road, it blocks all the people off from things like the school. Students regularly late for school or can't get home at the end of the day. Plus, the main road out of town is way over here, making people who work in adjoining towns unable to get to work or get home from work. And sometimes it's more than a hassle. It can be a safety issue. That's the firehouse. EMT Renee Tigert says they once had to hurl medical supplies over a park train to try to get to a kid that was struggling to breathe. Another time to get to a man who had suffered a stroke. And she says there are many other examples. It doesn't change. It will cost a life. It's getting worse and worse. Chief Varig says they have been trying to work with the train company, Union Pacific, asking them to be aware of the dangerous hassle they are creating and pleading with the corporate folks to stop the trains someplace else. They say they get lip service, but the trains keep blocking the road. I'm pretty frustrated. Frustrated and frankly scared on behalf of the people he has sworn to protect, Chief Varig decided it was time to call me. We began our investigation by looking into the laws that govern trains. We found there are no federal regulations on how long a train can block a road. There are, however, states that have passed laws on their own. Wyoming is not one of them. We also took Cokeville's concerns directly to Union Pacific, asking for an on-camera interview or a Skype interview with somebody at the corporate level. The company declined, but instead issued a statement. Cokeville is a critical route for exporting goods, they say adding that the tracks in Cokeville are where one train can park to allow another train to pass. When we pressed the company on the residents' safety concerns, Union Pacific wrote, quote, safety is our number one priority, adding that concerned residents should call their communication center to report incidents. There's a serious public safety issue with the railroad in our town. As for Chief Varig, he says he's doing what he can, writing the train tickets for blocking the road, tickets that Union Pacific does not pay. He's wringing his hands about the loss of life that he is confident will come. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when uh, someone gets seriously hurt or injured because we can't get to them. We also reached out to the U.S. Railroad Association to ask about all of this. That's the branch of the U.S. Department of Transportation that's supposed to deal with railroad safety. They are now working closely with the town of Cokeville to try to alleviate any future issues. If you've got something you want me to investigate, give me a call. My number, 801-839-1250, or you can email me, Gephardt at KUTV.TV.